Hey, Beth. Hello, Daniel. Come on in. So how is he? It's been hard. The move took a lot out of him. It took three months to get the house. Finally! Another few just to get everything moved in. It was really tough. A few months to move in? We have a lot of Funko Pops. Right, I saw your Christmas haul last year. But how's he doing now? Well, after going so long without posting anything, he started having doubts. Like maybe he didn't have it anymore. And then there was the deep depression of letting all those subscribers down. He just couldn't take it. And before long, he became... Catatonic? More like blithely distracted. Oh. But that was until recently, when I started giving him something new. A miraculous drug that brought him back to his senses? Well, sugar in his teeth. But he's shown so much improvement. Just wait till you see him. Wait a minute. This is the Awakenings review, isn't it? Oh, Joe, come on. That is a true story about people who are mentally handicapped. You cannot possibly be trying to make a parody of that and on the internet! No. No, of course not. That would be very inappropriate, Daniel. So inappropriate. Well, I'm sorry. I... Silly you. Well, guys, I'd love to stay in chat. But I have a review to film. It's good to be back. I miss future Joe. Hello guys and welcome back to Real Time With Me. It is really great to be back here with you guys again and I'm coming to you now from my new set. I hardly recognized it. Today's very fitting review is Awakening, starring Robert De Niro and Robin Williams and directed by Penny Marshall. In the summer of 1969, Dr. Malcolm Sayre, played by Robin Williams, begins working with catatonic patients out of a hospital located in the Bronx. Shortly thereafter, he discovers that these patients will react when stimulated by certain actions and circumstances. This leads him to attend a seminar on a new drug being developed that may yield promising results for his patients. One of these, Leonard Lowe, played by De Niro, whom he tests the drug on, experiences astonishing results when he awakens from his vegetative state. This incredible discovery leads Sayre to seek assistance from the donors of the hospital to try and apply the drug to the rest of the patients. Meanwhile, he and his staff are being deeply impacted by Leonard's progress and the implications of his awakening. What did I think of this movie? Well, there were a lot of manful tears, I can certainly say that. <laughs> Lots of crying. Lots. Oh, don't be such a baby. Adapted from the memoir of the same title from real-life neurologist Oliver Sacks, the film tackles the same lessons that Sacks and his staff learned from their patients back in 1969, which are to appreciate the little things in life and the blessing we have in living it. And this movie does so beautifully. From the go, it is excellently paced. From the time the patients experience their awakenings, the film balances moving drama with a soft sense of humor. Miriam, I don't know how to tell you this, so I'm just going to say it. Your husband. He was granted a divorce from you in 1953. My God. While it is sentimental at times, it doesn't ever really feel out of place. If anything, the sentimentality feels more derived from Randy Newman's emotionally patented musical score. Of course, knowing it's Randy Newman, we would expect nothing less. No. <laughs> the camera work here is also wonderfully, wondrously done, though I can honestly see how very easily one can take for granted how so many shots are designed to give the viewer a sense of seeing and experiencing everyday moments for the very first time all over again, and the effect, if you have the eyes to see it, really is breathtaking. The movie's foundation, though, are, of course, the two leads. Okay. 
Following his dramatic triumph in Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams gives us another memorable look at his serious side in the performance of Malcolm Sayer, who is based off of the real-life Oliver Sacks. He is shy and overly technical, but he is also layered and never feels like he's fading into the background. Robin Williams is one of those actors that I think it's safe to say we all sorely miss, and I think that's because he wasn't really one to shy away from much of anything when it came to his acting. He could be funny, he could be dark, he could be hard, and we see here that he can be very soft too. And the beauty of it is that this very easily could have been a repeat performance of Dead Poet Society, but instead we find him even more subdued in this film, as is appropriate for the character, and it just further emphasizes the talent that this man had. Which reminds me, hang up. All right, so. What about with the glasses? Okay, what do you think? like we're twins i thought about wearing this for the whole review but you know it looks kind of crazy when you're waving your arms around so no no i think i liked him better the other way robert de niro however is nothing short of astonishing he is absolutely remarkable the fact that this film can boast such a hollywood icon who is not above making himself look grotesque in order to make the character come alive for us makes the message of the film really that much more powerful. Oliver Sacks himself, when he met Robert De Niro in the course of making this film, said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that De Niro seemed to actually have some difficulty breaking character, that he was so connected to his depiction of Leonard that it was almost as though he had developed some Parkinsonian symptoms himself. Watching how his character progresses in the movie, I can believe it. He is utterly convincing. This really is a standout performance for him, and I know, I know that that is saying something because it's Robert De Niro we're talking about. But merely looking at his performance, not how iconic it is, not the overall film itself because he's just in so many good ones, just the performance alone, I say it's one of his best. Now mind you, that's not to say anything against the film. This movie is incredible. I've got to say, I was really shocked that I had never heard of this movie before doing these reviews. Now this was nominated for Best Picture, so at the very least it was appreciated in its day, but I sort of faded over time, I think, and I would say that's probably because there really are so many other movies trying to emulate the tone that this movie is going for and even succeeds at giving us, but Anyway, it's just a shame that this one goes under so many people's radar. Now, I will warn you that the story is very sad for, I think, most who view it, especially if it's your first time seeing it. And I'm pretty sure that anyone you know who has seen it is going to tell you the same thing. I myself now have seen it several times and I've done a lot of research and I can say that the message of it helps palette it better in those subsequent viewings, just in case. I don't know, you're planning on watching it more than once? That'll be the day. However, given the subject matter, the authentic performances, and the musical score... No man! Prepare for an emotional enema. Awakenings is rated PG-13 for some language, including one F-word and graphic depictions of mental handicap. Again, I won't lie to you, I bawled my eyes out watching this one, and my wife... She couldn't even finish it. She's very sensitive to movies like this, especially when it's based on a true story, as is in this case, and I really can't fault her or viewers like her in this respect because it is really hard to take in. And in all honesty, I don't know how anyone can watch such a relevant, powerful, and emotionally driven story like this without completely going to pieces, but if you'll humor me for a moment, I will say this much. The term Awakenings applies to so much here, and it's not just the patients depicted, but to those around them as well. Maturity, art, knowledge, taste, music, feeling, freedom, fun, friendship, sadness, anger, love, and ultimately life. And what I feel is the joy of life, the gift of life, the freedom of life, the wonderment of life. The goal of the film seems to be a gentle wake-up call for us to enjoy and be grateful for the life we live. Given how it ends, and how people inevitably are, you could choose to have a very cynical viewpoint of the events that transpire. And even some of the patients depicted in the film share that cynicism. But to only see the sadness and tragedy 
I think misses the intended message of the film, which I do believe is more hopeful. Now, I've wrestled with whether to include this next bit, because this is just a movie review, but given the way I've both heard and seen people respond to the movie, I'd like to offer a quote from Dr. Oliver Sacks on the matter of the patients following the events depicted in the film. I have become much more optimistic than I was when I wrote Awakenings, for there has been a significant number of patients who, following the vicissitudes of their first years on L-Dopa, came to do, and still do, extremely well. Such patients have undergone an enduring awakening and enjoy possibilities of life which had been impossible, unthinkable, before the coming of L-Dopa. I'm hoping that hearing that can at least add some context and perhaps even some comfort when watching this film. I have personally watched a few documentaries featuring Sachs and his patients and was more hopeful of the events that transpired those many years ago, but at the end of the day, Awakenings is a movie. And as far as it goes and how it presents its conclusion, I would say it is appropriate, respectful, and achieves its goal. More than that, Awakenings reminds us that sometimes the art of filmmaking is in how genuinely the story is told to the audience. And in this case, the presentation chosen strives to be as honest as it can be. The result is a phenomenal film with outstanding performances that is sure to leave an impression on anyone watching. I am giving Awakenings a 5 out of 5. Thank you very much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I wanted to also add how unfortunate it is to have lost such a talent as director Penny Marshall, again, who directed this film and passed away just this past December. It's kind of crazy for me just because I had been planning before I took my time off to return always with Awakenings, but then to have lost her over this period, especially with the connections that she has to the year of 1990. Uh, Gary Marshall, who directed Pretty Woman, was her brother. Rob Reiner, who directed Misery, was her husband of 10 years, who adopted her daughter. I just felt it was only appropriate for me to pay respects to her in this way, and at this time, she was a true talent that will be missed. <laughs> now, if Awakenings doesn't get you down, this review certainly will. <laughs> Hello darkness, my old friend. Now guys, again, before I had left on my hiatus, I had promised a video that I hadn't fully finished yet, and that is going to be my next post. It is a review of the Kurosawa film, Dreams. <laughs> Awakenings, followed by dreams. Get it? No? It's gonna be a little different than my usual stuff, but then I'm planning to change up a few things on this channel, so stay tuned for more, and don't forget, you're on Real Time with Joe. Well, silly you. I forgot my line. <laughs> Someone say future Joe? <laughs>